Welcome to CounterPoint. I'm Tanya Granick allen So have you heard of Line 5? I hadn't either prior to last fall when Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer declared she was canceling the easement for this line and issuing a 100 day, 180 days notice to Enbridge to turn off the pipeline. So what exactly is Line 5? Well, it's a pipeline which delivers oil and gas originating from Alberta and passes through the northern U.S. states, including through the upper peninsula of Michigan, bringing the product to refineries to petrochemical plants in Michigan and also Sarnia and all the way to Quebec. This line is a critical piece of the energy infrastructure which serves the needs of Canadians like you and me so that we can heat our homes, fuel our cars, and for supporting our agriculture so we can eat. So will Line 5 be cut off in May? Or will there be a legal challenge? And perhaps most importantly, how will this impact us Canadians? Later in the program, I will be joined by Marilyn Gladue, Member of Parliament for Sarnia Lambton, who will comment on the local impact if Line 5 is shut down. But now I'm joined by Dan McTeague, President of Canadians for Affordable Energy. Dan, welcome, ba uh, welcome back to the program. I've had you on before, but I didn't think we would be talking about uh, Line 5 uh, in the near future, but then the Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer said she's giving 180 days notice. So I guess let's start uh, with the first thing off the bat. Can you tell us the history of Line 5 and why it's important to us Canadians? Uh, good to be here, uh, Tanya. And yes, uh, Line 5 is a critical uh, part of our uh, uh, petrochemical and, of course, petroleum infrastructure in eastern Canada, as you quite rightly identified at the outset. The pipeline has been around since 1953. It was built by the Bechtel Corporation and subsequent owners wound up uh, being uh, Enbridge. Now, this pipeline uh, has uh, goes all the way from Alberta, provides light fuels and natural gas liquids, which are then turned into things like propane. Uh, and the cross not only uh, uh, the northern portions of, the, of our country, they then dip south in the United States and then make their way across critically uh, this, the uh, Michigan uh, Straits of Mackinac. Uh, and that, of course, uh, is about a four mile body, six or seven kilometer body of water that separates Lake Huron from Superior. Uh, those pipes, uh, two of them, uh, are made with substantially thicker steel than anything that is available virtually in the world. And there has never been an, a leak or an issue with that part of the pipeline under the water. That's the part that uh, the Michigan governor, hmm. uh, her colleague, who is the attorney general, uh, Dana Nessel, wants to shut down. They've been trying, by the way, since 2012. And I have been trying since 2017 to let people know, both now and in my previous job, uh, that uh, even Michigan officials were very concerned about the implications, not just for Michigan and for Ohio that share the oil, uh, but uh, most specifically Ontario and, yes, Quebec. And if you look from a propane point of view, the Maritimes. Okay, so you mentioned that even Ohio and Michigan um, rely on the products that come through Line 5. Uh, to me, this seems strange. Are they not just cutting off the hand that feeds if they cancel this line? They are, uh, and they're obviously incurring favour to a constituency that has been working overtime, as we know here in Canada, shut down pipelines of all shapes and forms. Now, of course, they will point out that the uh, rupture some nine years ago in the Kalamazoo River by the same company, Enbridge, uh, was uh, a tale and a, and a very telling point about uh, how not to uh, conduct yourself with pipelines uh, when they go underwater courses. But of course, that is something that the company has not only uh, responded to, uh, it has to point out that in a far more serious, and that's not to say that these leaks are not serious, but especially when they're in waterways, but in the case of uh, what we've seen here with respects to what's going across the straits for Line 5, there has never been a single issue. In fact, the company had proposed three years ago not only to keep those lines the same gauge, same thickness, but to bury them in an underground vault right. uh, several uh, meters under the actual waterbed so that no anchor or anything could hit them, even in the likely, unlikely event that that uh, could cause a, a disruption or a rupture. So uh, great strides have been taken. Uh, fortunately, the Michigan Department of Environment, not, the, not right. the actual governor, has already approved that. It's a half a billion dollar investment. Company's ready to do that. And the company's basically saying, look, regardless of what the, the governor does, we're proceeding with uh, making this a much safer pipeline, despite the excellent safety record and good record they've had up to now. Okay, and just to make it clear, so the Kalamazoo spill, for lack of a better term, was not the same as Line 5. That was a separate pipeline. Not at all. 
okay. very separate pipe and of course uh, another pipe that was picked up by Enbridge and uh, perras lacked uh, significant and Enbridge you know rightly took a took a black eye for that right. uh, and of course in the same state so you can understand the genesis of why uh, there are some who are concerned about this but generally speaking uh, this is the wrong pipeline to attack it's okay. had a stellar record and I think by any stretch uh, it's pretty clear it's been a, a good pipeline up to now okay. and it's extremely important. We're discussing what soon may happen, which is the cancellation or the shutting off of Line 5, which runs through the upper states of Michigan. And this was, again, decreed last fall by Governor uh, of Michigan, Elizabeth Whitmer, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, rather. Sorry, Gretchen Whitmer. So we talk about Line 5. There's also Line 5, which feeds into Line 9. So Line 5 comes through uh, the upper, like I said, the upper United States and comes through Michigan and then it lands in Sarnia, if you will, where there's a lot of refinery. But then that continues to feed into another pipeline, Line 9. Am I correct? That's correct. And now Line 9 is a uh, product or resource. Uh, petroleum companies uh, process the oil and turn it into gasoline, and they have their own matrix of pipelines. One, of course, from Sarnia going all the way to the Toronto International Airport, Pearson Airport, which is 100% of all the fuel there. But Line 9 also supplies Quebec's second largest refinery in Montreal, the uh, Suncor, all formerly known as Petro-Canada uh, um, refinery. And there, of course, about 30% of that uh, vital uh, refineries uh, product comes directly from again line five so all these pipelines are connected and when you dismantle one or you block one you necessarily create a sort of a cascading effect a knock-on effect as uh, the trendies like to use in terms of other uh, pipelines and other refineries fully in Canada uh, except for the Irving and Jean Gaulin refineries there are uh, at least five refineries, the one in Montreal and the four in Ontario, which would be adversely affected. They wouldn't be able to produce much in the way of diesel or gasoline, right. and that would bring your economy to a standstill. Well, and you mentioned that 100% of, of, I guess, jet fuel comes through this Line 9, which feeds off Line 5 to the Toronto International Airport, which is the largest airport in the country. There's a separate line that uh, feeds from Sarnia directly to Pearson Airport. Okay. Uh, that's not necessarily connected to line nine, uh, but line nine and line nine B are extremely important for all of the vitality of the economic engine of Ontario and Quebec. And not just that, of course, uh, the propane that uh, goes as far as not just Ontario and Quebec, but indeed the Maritimes. Right. So messing around with this pipeline uh, and it's, uh, it's indispensable uh, position at the core of our economy uh, is not something you want to fool around with. I could see a scenario very easily. The first victim, you would not be able to get a flight in or out of Pearson Airport, the third largest hub in North America, and of course Canada's biggest airport would literally be brought to its knees. Okay, and just to, again, make this very clear to our viewers, and, and for myself as well, so how many businesses, do you have a, an estimation as to how many businesses or how many families would be impacted if this governor in Michigan gets her way and shuts down Line 5? Well, short term, would you probably be looking at least ten to 20,000 families would be directly affected. Uh, that's not to say uh, that those who of us who have a business uh, re rely on transportation wouldn't be able to get around the yellow tape that's around most gas stations. And while companies can, you know, work around and get things delivered by rail or by truck or by ship, it's not as efficient as the pipeline. And it would mean that, uh, you know, you wouldn't just see a disruption in terms of not being able to get from point A to point B. You'd also likely see a massive spike in the price because we're not just talking about the Ontario, Quebec maritime market for fuel. We're also talking about critically the Michigan and uh, Ohio markets, which would compete with us right. to get whatever sap up, whatever residual supply is out there. Mind you, the Americans have been very successful in building out their pipelines, while Canada has deliberately tolerated the kind of negative uh, anti-pipeline, which means that pipelines like uh, Energy East, which is already supplying natural gas to Ontario, which could be converted had we not taken the time to uh, second guess, could already be an alternative. But that's two or three years away. We're in a bit of a crisis, and we better hope. Uh, it's quite, uh, if you will call it, a crapshoot. And I think, unfortunately, those who banked on ignorance for quite some time, they'd be very much in in in, in mood uh, and in mode for a very serious rude awakening. So why is Michigan doing this? Why now? It's a constituency within the United States, a very strong constituency. The same folks that uh, are opposing the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, more of a United States thing, the same ones that are opposing and already approved and being built uh, uh, Line 3 and bridge, which runs from Alberta, 
to Manitoba dips down and supplies almost all of the U.S. refineries. Mm. The same ones that we saw were behind Biden killing Keystone XL. The same ones that are against the Trans Mountain Pipeline, the coastal gas link. Take your pick. Canada has been really a petri dish for these green radicals to shut down uh, pipelines. And if the Canadians uh, accept that they, it's okay to be victims under some kind of woke idea that you can shut down your fossil fuel industry and harbor hydrocarbons industry, the Americans aren't gonna stop us uh, or get in our way. The reality here is that uh, American, this particular governor, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, is uh, very much in that sphere of people who want pipelines shut down without taking into consideration the totality of the importance of this pipeline in terms of her own constituents, not just with propane, but with their one big refinery in Marathon in Detroit. Okay, we're going to discuss further the impacts if Line 5 does get shut down right when we return from this commercial break. Dan, I have to say my blood pressure is through the roof just hearing this discussion. You mentioned that this line supplies so much propane. I live in a rural community in Ontario. A lot of homes are heated by propane. A lot of farms, agricultural businesses rely on propane. If they can't get this product, I, I'm, I'm very concerned. So I guess this leads to my next question. If Is there any workaround uh, or are we totally reliant on this Michigan easement? Well, we are reliant on it. Uh, Enbridge is saying, uh, um, you know, as General Clark would have said uh, at the Battle of Bastogne, famously nuts to uh, uh, Gretchen Whitmer and her gang. Um, of course, uh, the U.S. Department of Transport, not the Department of Energy, which is run by Pete Buttigieg, the guy who also campaigned on shutting down this pipeline, uh, you know, may very well have second thoughts. And I know that Bill McKibben, the guy who runs the big uh, 350.org, uh, isn't as uh, vocal on this. That might be a reprieve, but, you know, if this doesn't happen now, it's going to happen at some point down the road, and its implications for our region is are significant. Sorry, but there just aren't enough electric vehicles on the road to make up uh, the bulk of what we need. And uh, last time I checked, there are enough there aren't enough windmills or solar panels to keep us warm, much less be able to dry the grains of our farmers. Well, and if anything, uh, the example from Texas showed us that uh, all it takes is some massive inclement weather situation, and then that green energy comes to a screeching halt. Okay, uh, and uh, on Gretchen Whitmer, the um the uh, governor of Michigan. I found this interesting. Recently, uh, she declared an, an energy emergency because there was a fear that there wasn't enough propane coming in to heat people's homes due to elevated demand. And I think that's because of that weather storm that also crippled uh, Texas uh, due to that cold snap. Well, then how does shutting down line five, which provides Michigan with 55% of their statewide propane needs, how does this make sense? Well, it doesn't, but perhaps she's uh, crazy enough to believe that, uh, and I have to say crazy enough to believe that, well, after May 13th, it won't matter because other than barbecues, we don't use a lot of propane. Nothing, of course, could be further from the truth, and that's really casting and being irresponsible, I think, uh, to, to, to put it bluntly. Uh, but there are no other alternatives. I mean, yeah, you can say we're going to bring some ships in from Superior, pick up the load of 580,000 barrels a day. You're going to need a massive uh, uh, tanker to do that. But, you know, we have to realize that the Great Lakes is not the solution everyone thinks it is. Right. The, the Great Lakes is closed four months of the year, like now, right. as in today. Uh, so, you know, what are you going to do when you really truly need it in the colder weather? Uh, you're you're really uh, pushing yourself up against uh, uh, alternative infrastructure that isn't there. And I remind people that they, they think ships can do this. And remember the gales of November, as uh, Gordon Lightfoot quite rightly pointed, uh, you know, you don't want to be uh, in those kind of seas and those kind of choppy, uh, those kind of lake waters uh, come uh, the end of November, beginning of December. So for that reason, other than rail and trucking, that becomes inefficient. Prices go through the roof. And again, you're dealing with massive shortages right across much of the upper northeast, uh, northwest, uh, northeast United States and all of eastern Canada. Well, and, you know, if the concern is purely from an, um, uh, an environmental perspective, well, there have been, I mean, you said uh, rightfully and factually that there has not been a leak with this Line 5. However, we, ships can easily... Under, 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 the, under, the, under the water course, there have been leaks to either end. Pipelines do right, leak, right, but right. they're not serious. So, okay. um, you know, Kalamazoo being the example of where you would want to say this, but look... This is a, an extraordinary, important time for Canadians, and it's a shot across our bow. The fact that this isn't frontline, and I don't think people should be getting you know panicky about this, 
but it shows just how vulnerable we are to the ideology that wants to shut down the infrastructure that maintains our economy that to the extent that it does. And I'm not just talking about fossil fuels versus EVs. I'm talking about the very thing that keeps us warm, keeps our economy running, and of course uh, provides uh, you know, really the lift to our economic activity, the likes of which uh, we can't replace. Well, I don't know, I'm alarmed by this. I wanna know if I'm gonna be able to heat my home next fall. What does the future bode for Canadian petrochemical industry? Well, I think it's extraordinarily uncertain and it's under attack and it's under assault. Um, I'm one of those who happens to believe that as a guy who took on the oil industry uh, in terms of its competitive behavior, unlike anybody in the Greens or anywhere, uh, I never thought there would come a day where we want to destroy this industry. It's important to Canada. It's our number one economic engine. In other words, how are you going to pay down all this debt, folks? How do you propose to pay for your hospitals, your pensions, your roads when you've destroyed and uh, the golden goose? So it's critical that we we take all of these things about our climate, uh, you know, uh, overkill and put it in real strong perspective as in jobs are opportunities for the generation to come. Fossil fuels aren't going away, right. uh, not till at least 50 or 60 years. So anybody who thinks that uh, somehow Canada be, can become a guinea pig for the rest of the world and shut down its most important sector is kidding themselves. I'm more concerned about the standard of living and affordability in this country, which is being compromised by a handful of people who, frankly, whose radical ideas, as we saw in Texas and we saw in California, as we're seeing with the high price uh, carbon taxes are imposing by this government, are bringing the Canadian economy and consumers to their knees. Dan McTeague, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tanya. Cheers. Thank you. Welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on what the impact will be in Canada if we if Line 5 is shut down. And joining me now is Marilyn Gladue, Member of Parliament for Sarnia Lambton, who's going to explain to us what the impact is on in Sarnia, one of the biggest uh, petrochemical processing uh, areas in, in Ontario. Marilyn, thank you so much for joining me. I, I really appreciate this, and I can only imagine how uh, personal this is for you, because not only are you the member representative for uh, Sarnia, but you also yourself worked in this industry as an engineer. Am I correct? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, this is a very serious issue, not just for Sarnia Lambton and the jobs here, but in fact, uh, jobs across Canada and in the United States. So uh, it's essential that Line 5 stays open, and certainly I'm well acquainted with the industry and the details surrounding Line 5. Okay, so how will the cancellation of the easement in Michigan by their governor impact the people uh, of Sarnia and also, I guess, down the line, uh, excuse the pun? Well, absolutely. I mean, starting uh, starting with the people that are providing the oil that comes down Line 5, that will have an impact in Alberta. Mm -hmm. um, in Sarnia, we process um, that in our refineries. And here, there are actually 23... 1,500 jobs that will be impacted potentially if Line 5 shuts down. In addition, in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan, um, there are also refineries that are dependent on Line 5. So, uh, you know, there's impacts like all of the jet fuel for Detroit Airport and for Pearson come down through the process uh, from Line 5. Propane for farmers uh, to heat their barns and dry their grains from Ontario right through to Quebec and, uh, of course, Michigan as well, they will be impacted. And then there's about 30% of the people that heat their home with propane that would be without a source of home heat. And we saw the disastrous results in Texas. So we know that, you know, this is an essential service, especially in winter in places like Sarnia and Michigan. No, absolutely. And I, thank you for clarifying that also Detroit Airport also is... Uh provided its jet fuel is provided by line five i know that once it's refined in 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 sarnia i guess they uh, pass it along down there's a special line that goes to toronto pierce and that's interesting to note. so two major international airports in north america beyond the homes and the businesses uh, so i guess absolutely because the refineries that are in ohio pennsylvania and michigan are feeding you know into the detroit airport Right. Okay, so well, you're a member of parliament. I guess I dare ask the question, what is being done by the federal Trudeau government or even the provincial, say, Doug Ford government uh, to intervene here? Well, I've been calling on the government from the beginning. And uh, in addition to an e-petition, I've been asking a lot of questions in parliament and having meetings with um, our national resources minister, James O'Regan who has been very vocal to say that Line 5 is an essential um, service from an energy point of view and an economic point of view. 
Um, and so I then called on the prime minister to reach out to Joe Biden, the new president, to ask him to intervene because it's actually a federal treaty that oversees and permits Line 5 to operate. So it's not actually uh, within the state's power to make a ruling there. So if it's not in the state's power, then how was she able to do this? Or will that be tested in court? That will be tested in court. Um, obviously, there has been a petition from Enbridge to uh, have this heard at federal court instead of the state court. And the judge is uh, wanting a mediation and will take that decision later this year. That will certainly uh, delay the, the May uh, edict date until she has a chance to consider. But it's expected that because a federal treaty allows it to operate and there are impacts to other states and uh, people like the governor of Ohio and Pennsylvania have expressed concern about the, the economic damage to their states. There's actually about another $25,000 uh, 25,000 jobs at risk on the U.S. side. So it's really important for both countries, and that's why we need a leader-to-leader -leader conversation between the Prime Minister and the President to resolve the issue. Okay, I guess to wrap it up in the 30 seconds we have left, uh, what can and should be done, and what do you expect to see now in the, in the next few months? Well, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau said he had a meeting and raised it with Joe Biden. So now we want to know what did the president say and what will he do? There's e-petition 3081 you can sign to help keep Line 5 open. And there's a letter writing campaign on my webpage, mpmarylandgladue.com, that you can send to Governor Whitmer and get all your friends that live in Michigan that are her constituents to send that letter as well. MP uh, Gladue, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Thank you. Well, we here at CounterPoint are going to stay with this developing story. Will Line 5 ultimately be shut down? Time will tell. In the meantime, we'll see what the courts have to say. For CounterPoint, I'm Tanya Granik-Allen.